this video tutorial is all about the topic, Patterns of Non-Mandelian Inheritance. This topic is based on your activity sheet, Quarter 1, Week 3, and your learner's material, pages 28 to 38. So, it is best to have your activity sheets beside you and to have your books open. A friendly reminder, do not write anything on your books or your activity sheet. So sit back, watch, learn, and let the knowledge flow. For this topic, our learning target is to explain the different patterns of non-Mendelian inheritance. Before we start the topic of this video tutorial, let us have some wonderful warm-up questions. For question number one, what is a dominant trait? Your timer starts now. Time's up. Boom! You got the correct answer. Dominant traits are traits that are expressed and are represented by capital letters. For warm-up question number 2, what is a recessive trait? Your timer starts now. Time's up. Wow! You got it right! Recessive traits are traits that are masked and represented by small letters. We have five different patterns of non-Mendelian inheritance. But before that, let us jot down the basics of this topic. So open up your activity sheet and let's get started. The first thing that you need to know is all about genotype. Genotypes are represented by pairs of letters. They can be both capital letters, they can be both small letters, or they can be a combination of a capital and a small letter, as shown in your screen. Second thing that you have to know is all about phenotype. Phenotype are traits for letters. For example, tall. Then of course, if you have tall, then you have small. Third thing you want to know is all about dominant. Well, as, as a while ago, in the warm-up questions, dominant are expressed traits and they are represented by capital letters. For example, the capital letter P. The fourth thing that you have to be familiar about is all about recessive. Likewise, in the warm-up question, recessive are masked by dominant genes and they are represented by small letters. For example, you have the small letter T. What if you have two capital letter T? What trait does, does it pertain? Or what if you have two small letter T? What trait does it pertain? Or how about a combination of a capital letter T and a small letter T? What trait does it pertain? The fifth thing that you should know and should be familiar about is Punnett Square. Well, Punnett Square are mainly used to solve all genetic problems. But let us have a guinea pig for an example. Our first parent is a hairy guinea pig with a genotype of a capital letter H and a small letter H. Then we have a hairless guinea pig as our second parent with a genotype of two small letter H. In order to properly use a Punnett Square, kindly take a look at that part of your screen where an animation of a Punnett Square is splashed. That is, how you, that is how we are going to use a Punnett square. First of all, you have to draw a square and you have to cut it into four halves. Then, on that top part of the Punnett square is the genotype of our first parent which is a hairy guinea pig. The genotype of the hairy guinea pig is a capital letter H and a small letter H as, at in, as indicated in the Punnett square. Then, on the left side of your Punnett square is the genotype of our second parent, which is a hairless guinea pig, which is no small letter H. Then, inside of each every square is the offsprings, their possible offsprings, and their genotypes. From that genotype in each square, we will be determining the traits or their phenotypes. Let us now discuss about the five patterns of non-Mendelian inheritance. Pattern number one is called incomplete inheritance. This pattern occurs when two dominant traits are blended. For example, in flowers, their petals have two dominant colors, red and white. 
red and white cannot be shown in a similar petal. So, the tendency for these two colors is they blend. If a red flower is blended with a white flower, you will have an offspring of a pink flower. And that is called incomplete inheritance. Pattern number two is called co-dominance. This pattern occurs when two dominant traits won't blend together like the first pattern. As a result, these two dominant traits will manifest together in an organism. Let us have cows for example. In cows, there are two dominant coat colors which are black and white. If a black cow is mated with a white cow, you won't have a green cow for an offspring. White and black both blend and become gray. Instead, these two colors will manifest together in their offspring. So, if a black cow is mated with a white cow, you will have a spotted cow, which has both the color of black and white in its coat. So that is codominance. For a bonus, codominance is also observed in blood typing. There is a special part there in your activity sheet that is dedicated for blood types. So, I encourage you to please read and explore that part because blood typing is so interesting. Pattern number 3 is called multiple alleles. This pattern usually occurs in animals with purse that have lots of possible combinations of coat colors like the bunny flash in your screen. What animals can you think of that can have multiple alleles in their coats? Pattern number 4 is called polygenic traits. This is a pattern where a phenotype will be expressed by several genotypes. A while ago, we have discussed that a phenotype is expressed by a single pair of genes. But in polygenic traits, that is not the case. Let us have the picture flashed on your screen as an example. That picture is showing the different kinds of skin colors. Can you find your skin color in that picture? Well, I know you can find it. Let us have the appearance of them all. A very white skin is a phenotype, and it is not only expressed by a single pair of genes, but it is expressed by three different pairs of genes. Can you name those genes? I bet you can do it. That is polygenic traits. Pattern number 5 is called sex link traits. This is a pattern all about X and some Y and some carrier. If you are a female, your genotype will be 2 capital letter X. If you are a male, then your genotype will likely to be a capital X and a capital Y. If you have a sickness like color blindness or other sex link sickness, then your genotype will be a capital X, a C on top, and a Y. Well, the world is so unfair that most of those sex link diseases can only manifest on men and females can be only considered as carriers. An example of those sex link traits are hemophilia, color blindness, and pattern baldness. Those are called sex link traits or sex link diseases. To check if you have learned something from this video tutorial, let us answer some series of questions that will generalize our topic. First question is, what are the five patterns of non Mendelian inheritance? Your timer starts now. Your answer is correct. Looks like someone is doing some serious study, huh? The five patterns of non Mendelian inheritance are incomplete inheritance, predominance, multiple alleles, polygenic traits, and sex link traits. Let us proceed to question number two. How will you distinguish the five patterns from one another? Your timer starts now. Wow, you are really nailing this lesson. That is correct. One pattern is different from each other because each pattern has a unique set of genes or genotypes to express and a unique set of phenotype to manifest. Let us now proceed to your task found on your activity sheet and help Harry and Nana achieve their goal. For week number 3, enrichment activity number 1, Harry and Nana's inheritance. You will be tasked to identify the 5 patterns of non mendelian inheritance and write a short definition for each. Good luck! 
For week number 3 and enrichment activity number 2, Harriet and Nana's choice, you will be tasked to look at several pictures. Then, you will have to identify what type of non-Mendelian inheritance is being portrayed by those pictures. Happy thinking! And to understand further, can you answer these two random questions? And that's it for the video tutorial about the topic, Patterns of Non-Mendelian Inheritance. If you have any question, post it on your science Facebook group. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and see you on the next video.